Do you want to take your cocktails to the next level by just adding aroma? Well, my friend Aaron here, he's going to show you how, if you stick around here today on WTF. Hello and welcome to WTF where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Garrett and today I have a very special guest, Aaron from Alice and the Magician. Aaron, how are you? I'm great, Scott. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Great. And Aaron actually makes some great products that we carry at Modernist Pantry and he's here to show us uh, today. So what he makes are uh, aromatics for drinks. but. What exactly does arom um, aroma do for cocktails? Gotcha. So scientists generally consider um, flavor to be about 85% aroma. So anytime that you can enhance or transform aroma, then you can enhance and transform the flavor of drinks. Um, so that's what we do at Alice the Magician. Um, we make cocktail aromatics. Uh, some are mists mm -hmm. and some are what we call flavor elixirs that are added drop by drop to the cocktail. So yeah. As a chef, I don't generally venture into the bar much, mm -hmm. and you mentioned you have the drops that go into the cocktail themselves, mm -hmm. and then you have the mists. What are the difference between those two? Uh, do you mind if I get a little nerdy with oh, you for a minute? We like right. nerdy here on um, WTF. So uh, people smell uh, and taste in two different ways. Okay. You smell with your nose, which is called orthonasal olfaction, okay. and then you also smell and taste kind of in the back of your throat, which is called retronasal olfaction. All right. Now when you're smelling with your nose, it has a really direct link to the memory and emotion part of your brain, so you can have a really strong and po hopefully positive reaction. Um, so when we missed it, uh, when we missed a drink with the aromatic, then we're really trying to play on the orthonasal olfaction. So you get a lot of intensity, this really ethereal type of smell and flavor. Whereas when you add the drops to the drink, it's a little bit more consistent, it's a little bit more subtle, and it works on your retronasal olfaction, which is a little bit more utilitarian. Yeah. But still, once again, you're really playing on the aromatics of the cocktail. Great. And, and we're actually going to do a demo a little bit later uh, where we're using both, so we can get mm. two different flavors or aromas, excuse me, into a cocktail and, and give you two different experiences with it. Exactly. Yep. And with your ingredients, uh, are they similar to bitters? I know bitters have some aroma. Sure, sometimes. that's a that's a great question. Um, there are some similarities, you know, aromatics uh, uh, do exist in bitters, um, but there's two main distinctions. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one uh, is uh, we only have aromatics in our products. Okay. Um, so they have no taste of their own, whereas bitters characteristically do have a bitter taste. Okay. Um, the second main distinction is the type of extraction method that we use for our aromatics versus the way that bitters are made. Mm -hmm. uh, so bitters are generally you know, spices, herbs, uh, citrus, steeped in grain alcohol, and mm. the grain alcohol is, is what leaches the flavor out. Okay. Um, so you get some kind of one and two dimensional flavors. Yes. The extraction method that we use is much more high tech and you're able to get every single aromatic molecule out of the plant or the botanical into the aromatic. So it's a lot fresher, it's a lot more poignant, it's a lot more intense, um, and you don't have to worry about adjusting the taste profile when you're adding uh, the aromatics for flavor. So you can get all all these flavors in without having to do any extra muddling, uh, without having to change the taste, so no salt, no sugar, no extra bitter. Exactly. So you have this really clean cocktail but with all this extra added mm -hmm. flavor. Cause what yeah, said, we like right? to say maximum flavor, maximum. minimum amount of dilution of spirit. You know, if you kind of get the sweet, sour balance right in a drink, then you can start layering as many aromatics as you want, and it's kind of hard to screw it up. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Cool. And you have some great stuff. Uh, you actually showed us some really special stuff. Um, that you're working on that we're not gonna have just yet, <laughs> but you can keep checking modernistpantry.com because I'm sure we'll carry them when they come out. Uh, so do you do a lot of traveling to find these ingredients? Yeah, one of the things that we enjoy the most and that we're also the most proud of is how we source the individual ingredients. Um, so I have traveled quite a bit sourcing ingredients and I'm looking for the maximum aromatic value. And generally when you find the maximum quality, it tends to go along with like organic or sustainable or at least socially conscious growing and harvesting practices. Once we've identified the premier botanical, whether it's cilantro or citrus, it goes through a really unique extraction process um, that uh, we don't use heat or chemicals, moisture or oxygen oh. during the extraction process. And that allows us to pull every single aromatic molecule out and it's in the exact same um, proportion as it would be in nature. So when you use the aromatic on your drink, your brain and your mouth and your nose are telling you that this is a natural, uh, and not just natural for the sake of natural, natural for the higher quality. Yeah, too. and just a freshness to it. Not, uh, yeah, people, really fresh. People know when things are artificial mm -hmm. that they're tasting. Right? Absolutely. And we yeah. were actually talking about a little bit of lime earlier, mm -hmm. how, how yeah. lime is a tough one. 
Great. So why don't we get into actually making this cocktail and, and, and tell us what we're going to do. Uh, so this is a Southeast Asian gin and tonic. Gin and tonic, perfect drink. It's a wonderful <clears throat> classic. And this is a small aromatic uh, modification on that. Um, it's great in the summertime, but it's also great all year round, too. Yeah, so. I love gin and tonics. So. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, a lot of people don't know this also, but your sense of smell is the only one of your senses that's directly linked to the memory and emotion section of your brain. Yep. Um, so this happens to be inspired by a personal scent memory of mine um, that I had when I was sourcing ingredients in Thailand. Oh. So if you were to walk into a... Uh, a market in northern Thailand. So really quick, you, you added the gin oh, yeah, first, sorry. right? So yep, about yep. 30, 35 mil of gin. Okay. Uh, about 10 mil of fresh lime juice. Okay. And we're gonna add about 10 mil of uh, simple syrup. This is standard one-to-one -one ratio simple yes. syrup. Um, and the reason, you wouldn't really normally put sugar in a gin and tonic, mm -hmm. but to balance out the intensity of the, the, the lime juice we're putting in there, yep. and to give some ground for the aromatics to work on, we are gonna make a little bit of sweet sour balance. Great, and you were talking about, uh, before I cut you off, I'm sorry sure. about that, but no, uh, no going to Thailand and, yeah. and being in the market, and I think that's kind of what we're getting into now with this Exactly, elixir, right? so if you walk into a fresh market in Northern Thailand, there are some like staple aromatics that will hit you right in the face mm -hmm. immediately. Kaffir lime leaf, Thai basil, mint, cilantro, ginger, galungal root, and lemongrass. Those are the classics, you'll always find them. So this uh, elixir Thai green market is uh, both inspired by that experience and sourced from that area also. Um, this is highly concentrated, so you really don't need much. Um, I kind of want to go a little bit over the top in this case, so I'm going to okay add five that. drops. Five drops. Okay, so a very, very small amount. Yeah. Uh, and, and this bottle will last a long time. And I, I know you, you mentioned going to Thailand and smelling that market, but what made you put it with a gin and tonic? Because that seems, uh, you know, maybe two different sides of the world at that point. Uh, what made you put these two together? Or what makes you put one of these, you know, either um, elixirs or the aromatic sprays with a certain cocktail? So in this case, there's some, like, uh, some just trial and error that mm -hmm. I did on my own. I knew that these aromatics are really crisp and really green and refreshing, yep. and gin and tonic is too. Um, but there's also some his historical precedent with tonic water and gin and tonic during the, the kind of ugly col you know, colonial period yes. in that part of the world. Um, but, you know, despite it being like ugly from a, uh, you know, a, co a colonialism yeah. point of view, it's a really good drink, and so it has that historical precedent, too, okay. um, from that part of the world. Great. So I think there's some history stuff that makes sense. Um, there's some flavor science that makes sense. And then, of course, I really always encourage as much experimentation with aromatics as, po as possible. Like I said, Great. it's really hard to screw up. Okay. So, so this is just the, um, the aromatic elixir, lime juice, sugar, uh, and gin in here. Okay. Um, and there's no predetermined amount to stir. Um, I keep my, uh, my hand at the very base of the stirring glass, and as soon as my, my thumb and my finger get really cold, I know it's cold enough. So you just want to chill the, the liquor and the lime juice and the simple syrup until it's cold enough. You don't want to add any extra dilution to the Exactly, liquor, right? yep. So the reason uh, we're mixing the ingredients together, but we're also chilling it down. So when we pour it into our new glass with fresh ice, it's already cold uh, so that the, the ice doesn't melt anymore uh, and mm -hmm. dilute the spirit or the flavor. Cool which is also the reason we're not shaking it. Um, shaking can incorporate too much air and it can waste some of the aroma, but it can also break the ice a little bit uh, into little chips that melt prematurely uh, and dilute the spirit. Yep. And sometimes it, it'll lay on top too and it's not as, as pretty or as right. clean of a cocktail. Someone, right. someone told me that when that happens, it's called a skiff. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, so don't quote me on that. We'll make sure Cole edits that out. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So just uh, some extra ice cubes here so it yep. can uh, dilute on its own uh, throughout the, the night or wherever you're doing it. And everyone has their own ratio of tonic water to spirit for gin and tonics. Yep. Um, this is a four to one ratio. Okay. Approximately. Great. Um, you don't really have to measure the tonic so much if you measure the spirits right and then fill the rest mm -hmm. of the glass, the glass with ice. Okay. Uh, and then... So we have the tonic water there. Some tonic water here. Um, and... There's a really clever trick. And this is how you incorporate the tonic uh, while preserving the bubbles, and it also helps mix the tonic in with the rest of the drink. So you get a nice good. even distribution. So the spoon pulls it right down to right, the right down to yep. the to the Beautiful. middle and base of the drink. Great. 
Um, I always like to leave a little bit of space. Uh, we call that headspace. Headspace is absolutely critical in cocktail making mm -hmm. when it comes to aromatics. Um, because if you don't leave any headspace, there's no room for the aromatics from the drink to collect. Okay. And we can't add any extra aromatics on top. So, so we'll, we'll go into what I made for this cocktail, my, my massive contributions to it. Uh, and I actually made a nice kefir lime foam to go along with your aromatics. And I made this out of foam magic, and you can find the recipe at modernistpantry.com. So just a few, just to sit there and not ruin all the headspace, but sit right on top and give it a really beautiful kind of bubbly mm -hmm. uh, look to it. I love the way the really large bubble structure in yeah. that. It holds aroma. Yeah, the, the, um, it's really the foam magic works really acid. great. You get those big bubbles without having mm -hmm. to. Um, you know, sometimes it's really dense or it sits really low, and these hold up really well. So, what's the last part that we need for this? The cocktail? last part is we're going to use an aromatic mist that I call Andalusia's Garden. Um, you can find this on the Modernist Pantry website. This is primarily a cilantro-based mm -hmm. aromatic. Um, so, cilantro and gin and tonics are a really good pairing because a lot of gin is made with coriander. And this just pulls that flavor out of the gin um, and just gives it really, really intense green freshness. Um, you know, when I nice. use these, I think of either taking an element that's already in the cocktail mm -hmm. and kind of turning the volume way up on it, um, or adding an element uh, that you want in there that either uh, is hard to manufacture um, or you just want to do it really quickly. Yes. So uh, this is pretty intense. Like I said, I'm just going to miss this once. Great. Uh, and nice then those on there. aromatics are just going to kind of hang in the headspace of the drink. And I think you should give it a try and tell me what you like. Uh, you got it. All right. <laughs> All right. Down the hatch. So, oh, yeah, immediately coriander uh, cilantro mm -hmm. goes right through it. I'll leave that over here for now. Uh, that is delicious. Um, you really get all, all those herbs, all those aromas come right through strong, but it's still a genic tonic. You're not mm -hmm. covering any of that up. So that's really great, and uh, we're actually going to have this recipe on the website as well as uh, a few others, and we're going to be doing some video, um, you know, showing off your amazing aromatics and elixirs. So if you go to modernistpantry.com or blog.modernistpantry.com to either pick up the ingredients or find the recipes, and I think that's about it for all for uh, WTF today. One sip, and I'm already losing my <laughs> words. Uh, so, do you have anything else you want to talk about, or are we good to get out of here and have a few cocktails? Uh, I think the only last thing I'll say is, uh, you know, if you're wondering what aromatics to pair it with uh, what drinks, um, there's a couple simple rules. You know, greener, fresher ones for gin and vodka. Um, mm -hmm. Heavier, richer flavors like smoke or chocolate with barrel-aged spirits. But other than that, experiment, have a great time, and we'll see you soon. Yeah. So thanks for coming and watching uh, WTF here, and. Uh, if you want to find these recipes, like I said, go to the blog. But other than that, I'm Scott Garrett. I'm Aaron Wisniewski from Alice and the Magician. And uh, thanks for coming. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want these great recipes and these awesome ingredients, first you're going to have to like, comment, and subscribe. And then you're going to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you can find those awesome recipes and you can ask a chef. And to get these great ingredients, go to modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, helping you transform food.